since apparently we get, didn't get enough uh, talking in a best of five grand finals, which I guess technically only went to game four. We are recording this right after the uh, right after covering the Elite League finals. Do a second episode of this. Your guys' feedback seemed to be uh, it seems like you guys enjoyed it. We'll make some adjustments for for the second one and uh, kind of keep this going. But Avery, we just got done with Elite League and uh, big upset. Spoilers for everybody. I mean, if you're watching this show, it's obviously going to be spoilers full. So you better not complain about it. Uh, Extreme managed to take down Falcons uh, 3-1. A result that I did not see coming at all. I mean, I I thought that was pretty expected, honestly. (laughs) I'll give me that shit. (laughs) I mean, nobody stays on top forever. You know what I'm saying? I I think they had a better chance than people gave them credit for. But yeah, they definitely weren't favored. It was probably like a 70-30 series and they, they found the 30, you know? And exceeded everybody's expectations. And China's back, baby. The dragon. You're the dragon. Talked about it. And, you know, I was thinking about this. Jin Q. He's won two grand finals. Mm-hmm. We were casting both those grand finals. So, who <laughs> who really gets the credit for this one? Uh, I'm going to take, see, like, point, point 0.1%. percent i will take 0.1%. Good luck charm. You know? He's never going to watch this. So, <laughs> I can say that with impunity. Wait, is that actually true? He's, he, I mean, he's won more grand finals than that, but like, we're talking like land finals and stuff like that. So you're talking about Kuala Lumpur, right? Yeah, well, it's after LGD. I mean, obviously that team won a bunch mm. of stuff, but I yeah, wasn't yeah, casting, yeah. and so it doesn't doesn't matter. Nobody cares. I, well, they even they <laughs> they won games of the future, but I guess no one counts that tournament. That so. is not a real land. I'm gonna say that is not a real land. I mean, they can say it's that is the fakest land I've ever seen in my life, but that's another discussion for another time (laughs) (laughs) all right we'll we'll focus on elite league so when we left off uh it was before playoffs started we had our predictions about who was going to go through falcons were obviously favored to uh get to the grand finals in the first place uh who was going to get there alongside of them um i mean there was a lot of western european teams that ended up uh pooping out here because it's Game of Gladiators took down G2IG, but then they met, met up against uh, Team Liquid, who got knocked down by Azure Ray, which was, I think, pretty surprising to me. Didn't didn't really see that coming, to be honest. I mean, the Liquid struggles continue here. Yeah. Or Europe's struggles continue, I guess. As can't even get into the top three here when they had, you know, two of the top six, I guess, top eight, whatever, however you want to match, match it. Mina was also two of the top eight. Uh, I don't know. This liquid team just there's something different about it than the previous iterations. I don't know what it is, but I think they lost like their two biggest leaders in Matu and Zai. And I think 33 is an interesting leader, but he's kind of unproven in that area. I feel like this is his first big team where he's like, I'm the captain now. Give me the ship. And mm-hmm. he just like steers it into a rock. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, the next time we're not going to hit that rock. I mean, the rock is like not bad. They still got top four, but it's unproven. And I also think that he he's a very, I don't want to say contentious player, but that guy has a lot of beefs, you know. He he, he talks a lot of trash sometimes. He, he's a very angry pub player. He has his good sides and, and his faults like every Dota player. I just Somebody once told that... me that nobody has more beefs in the Dota game than 33. Yes. So I wonder how that <laughs> dynamic works on Liquid, who's supposed to be this, you know, kind of wholesome group of lads. Mm-hmm. He's just interesting. He comes from Tundra, which was like, Super nerdy, try hard, Dota talk all the time to Liquid, where Blitz said in that interview that they were a team that was mainly people oriented. Yeah. The fix the people problems, get people as they're working together, and Dota took a backseat. And now Dota's at the front because he's the captain. That's like a that's a hard thing to mesh, you know? I just, I just wonder somebody's getting mad on that team, I'm telling you. Somebody's getting mad. It's 33, I'll tell you who it is. 33 is getting <laughs> mad on that team. But is anybody else getting mad with him? You know what I'm saying? Because getting mad is not bad. You need somebody on the team who's going to get really pissed off and be like, what the fuck are we doing, guys? We got to start winning uh-huh. some shit and drive that team forward. I think he can be that guy. But is anybody else on that team dynamically bouncing off of that and working towards the solutions that he wants to find that he might not necessarily have? He needs someone else to come up with? I don't know, man. It's, it's a weird dynamic question. I don't well, really know. Apparently him, him and Boxy are uh, two peas in a pod. Uh, apparently Boxy was that kind of guy who would focus on the mechanics and the nitty gritty and he would, you know, speak up about things that he thought were bad uh you know so i I guess he does have some backup there in that regard uh but so so my question is you set that up and it almost sounded like you were setting up into 33 is failing liquid 
Uh, and, and, and it does, in some ways, I think Liquid's performance this year is they're a little bit underperforming compared to their previous years. Uh, or at least bar. last year, right? Where they were hitting grand finals after grand yes. finals. But 33 is also a winner and Team Liquid is also a second place team. So really, like, who's who, who's failing who here? You know, so you're Liquid's failing 33. I, uh, interesting Maybe. perspective. Interesting perspective. It could be failing each other right now. I don't know. I mean, the results have been mixed. Like they got that last at Dream League, and then this was supposed Very to bad. be like the bounce back tournament. Mm -hmm. And they had some good showings this tournament, but ultimately in this playoff bracket, they only beat Gaiman. They lost to Azure Ray. They lost to Extreme in two two one series where people have big questions about the drafts. You know, like they're confident in their ideas, but the ideas, they weren't good enough or they weren't playing well enough. And then it ends up making the ideas look worse, which is sometimes unfortunate in Dota. But ultimately, they only really beat their European counterpart who they've had probably more experience playing against than anybody else, which is a big win because that was like their mortal enemy. They mm -hmm. finally vanquished the game and gladiators gods. Though I think game have somewhat vanquished themselves at the moment. Uh, you well, know. I, okay, counterpoint though. <laughs> they only lost to Western Europe, or they only beat Western European teams, but they only lost to Chinese teams, right? So maybe, yeah. maybe that's like yeah. I think Liquid is probably very confident in the Europe, and I think the, they're probably the meta matchup. I think they're comfortable against those. That guys. is probably true. So that's maybe it's true. just maybe they just ran into the wrong teams, right? Azure Ray yeah. and Extreme. They're just not not really practiced against them, not confident against them. I mean, you can say that, but I don't think they're going to say that. So <laughs> <laughs> really, who cares? You know, at the end of the day, you'd yeah. be like, oh, this is, we're just not good versus China. But then what are you going to say at the next room when you have to play China again? Now you're just like setting yourselves up to be bad against China. Like there's no way Liquid's going to have that mentality. They think they're going to be the best team in the world, which they should. So they have to be confident for every region. And I think they should have been really confident for Azure Ray. I think Azure Ray overperformed. Yeah. Uh, not their bad team, but they're still figuring stuff out. And I think the fact that they took Liquid down 2-1 and then basically just got bamboozled by both the top two teams is like Liquid feels like they should be a top three team. So they lost to the team that got goddamn slapped by the two big dogs of the event. So that's yeah. like, where the hell are you then? I don't know. Interesting questions with this roster. I think Birmingham is going to show a lot. Might be, I don't want to say it's like a make or break event for them, but it might be more important for them than a lot of other teams. Like, some events are definitely more important. You know, Azure Ray won this Elite League. They go to Birmingham. Let's say they get third or sixth. Whatever, right? Maybe it doesn't matter too much for them because they got a dub. Like, Falcons, they're going to probably do well. Maybe they don't win it, but they got three tournaments win. They're chilling. But for Liquid, it's like, they. I think they really won a top three at that event. And let's say they get, like, a sixth or eighth. Are you just, like, questioning the, the roster now? And once those thoughts start to seep in... Can't get them out. They're nasty. They're they're, they're real nasty. You know. Oh, well, I, th there's nowhere else. They have to have faith in it. Is there anywhere else they can really go? Because they needed an off laner uh, who could captain, and there are really only two options out there. I feel like it's Amar and 33. Uh, they get 33. There, isn't there some quote of like every every person's like one bad day away? driving off a cliff or like murdering a bunch of, like there's some quote like that i don't know what, i don't you know where mean it's like from. the joker quote <laughs> yeah it's all from... it takes is one no 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 there's day i'm about to google this there's some quote you know all it, like everybody's one bad slip away from just murdering their whole family like i think every dota team is just <laughs> who has this quote <laughs> who says this i don't know people? man it's some what the whatever hell? every dota team is one bad tournament away from that that slow decline into the like the disband slash kick mm. like that's you're always at that one edge you know it only takes you can win eight tournaments in a row and then you have one bad tournament and all of a sudden one guy's like you know is this guy is this guy really like a top tier carry player i don't know and then you're just on that trajectory now like now you're in that space and it's hard hard to pull out of that tailspin you know, okay it's, it's hard i don't think birmingham is that tournament because we're gonna have a patch before birmingham and oh, yeah, that's true. I think teams are just going to write it off, right? All right. That's Plus, fair. does Birmingham really have the, the the most prestige? Like, sure, it's a LAN event, but like... I was just saying timing-wise, you know, how many events you can go in a row. I think for some of these yeah. teams, it's it's going to be a big deal, even with a new patch. Like, mm -hmm. some of these, you're, like, I think people underestimate when you win and then you stop winning, how bad that feels. Like, that is yeah. the worst feeling in Dota uh, because you tasted the holy water. You, you made it. <laughs> To the promised land you tasted that sweet freshness and you realized how good it is and then you get pulled away from it and thrown back in mm. the desert 
to deal with Shyulud and the other sandworm <laughs> behemoths that are just gnawing at you. And then you're, you're shrunk back down to, you know, a little Maudib. And then you have to go deal <laughs> with the giant sandworms. And you'd rather be the giant sandworm. You'd rather be the god emperor sandworm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Th yeah. That feeling understand. sucks ass because you clawed your way out of that desert to get there in the first place. And you know what it's like, you, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Some of these teams... You might be one bad tournament away from a disband, especially in a season where you are not locked by DPC anymore, Austin. There's no big yeah. daddy valve to come in and be like, you don't keep that guy. You don't keep oh, that guy. I mean, there, there is still the, the EPL or EPT, whatever, the ESL yeah, system. That's true. There is still that point system. Yeah, but I, apparently, you, you know, you, like, you trade out them even things. if you kick people and you fuck up that system, then, like, some other team is going to disband and then you're just going to get invited like OG did anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. you can always bank on that, I guess. Yeah, I'm just saying Birmingham maybe not the biggest deal because uh, you know I mean well, I is think it, it's a is big it deal. really a big deal if, I think if it's Cap and deal. Avery aren't casting it. That's all I'm okay, saying. Well, <laughs> you know it's like it can't be a it can't be. I guess a that I guess that means Jin Q is not going to win it. That's what that means. He <laughs> has, exactly. He has Q, no chance. <laughs> he should be he should be calling up he should be calling up whoever he can to try and get us there. Uh, I think if it weren't for the new patch, I think it would be a, a pretty pivotal tournament for a lot of these teams because the other thing is you can't go too deep in a season before you make a change. Yeah, uh, like you can't go two months out from TI, and that's when you decide to kick someone unless you're Eternal Envy. Like nobody does that shit. So you have to kick someone or change something somewhere in this next like two to three month period. You know? Okay. And I think Birmingham's the largest tournament in that period. There might be like there's another Dream League probably. There's another. There's a PGL Wallachia. Yeah, that's so going to be coming up after. There's like that. some online stuff, but in terms of land, right? Seeing your team on land, how they're going to perform under pressure. Maybe new patch is going to influence that a bit, one way or the other. But like, I'm telling you, bro, it's hunting season. It's hunting season. If you are a high MMR player on the European ladder right now, you should be playing a thousand pubs a day. You should be in there, fucking smiley facing ATF in that pub, <laughs> getting on Seb's Twitter. For posting some made up shit like I'm 16,000 MMR, like you should be on that grind because <laughs> somebody's getting their ass kicked. I'm telling you, there's no DPC regulations anymore. Somebody's getting their ass kicked for this TI. I don't know who it's going to be. And if you're available, you're going to get that Maureen spot, you're going to get that Thompson spot. You know, these dudes who are these pub players who come in who just slither their way into that TI, you know, just slither their way into that spot, like, oh. Oh, you wouldn't be looking for a upcoming mid player, would you? By any chance? Well, I happen to know someone. It's me. And then you you get that shot. There's not a lot of those in Dota life. You got to take them when you get them. I'd be looking out for it. That's all I know, man. There's no way you're describing the pub player who hasn't played professionally that gets onto a tier one team as a snake. The Look, snake not... behavior is knowing people and being like, oh, it looks like it's, no, it's... I don't know if your 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 off laner's working out so far. Oh, you know, man, I'm that's, coaching right that's now, a but I feel like I could do better than that. Guy. I'm not saying he's like a devious snake. Snakes are okay. First off, snakes are cool. That I feel like that's <laughs> injustice to snakes. It's okay. just because he's slithering. You know, like Randy Orton slithered. <laughs> Randy Orton's not a, he's not some evil fucking entity. So maybe they slithered in like Randy Orton. You know, RKO from the top <laughs> rope, like. Yeah, it's just they skip the whole season, and it's not bad because they're looking for a shot. You know, slither into mm. your shot. That's what I meant. To say. <laughs> slither into your shot. Yeah. Okay, we're we're losing the lead a little <laughs> bit here. Let's go with the other analogy, the desert analogy. Once you've tasted the 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 holy water from the oasis, yes. Yes. you're out of the desert, and yes. you get taken out of that position. That's the worst feeling you say in Dota. So yeah doesn't that doesn't that mean falcons is in the most precarious position because they just got ripped away from that position they yeah, just but... got a tournament that was supposed to be theirs taken away and then they go into birmingham new patch right where they might be the most susceptible since they were the most winning team if i had to guess valve has already decided their patch changes they're not looking at extreme gaming and going oh yeah no like gotta deal with well, they might they might deal with XM Sniper, but <laughs> you know, like they're they're going to probably be taking some shots at uh, at what Falcons is best with. Yeah, I mean, I'd be sweating a little. I'd be sweating, you know. I'd be putting mm -hmm. in my good word with Ice Frog through the channels if I know him at all. Here's your old friend Amar the fucker. Please don't fucker me, you know. <laughs> like whatever channels you got, you got to use them now. But... No fuck the fucker, please. <laughs> yes, I'm the fucker, please. <laughs> No fucker to me. I mean, I feel like when you get second, it's not a it's not a deep enough fall off to cause that. Mm. 
especially when you won three in a row, they're, those guys are chilling, man. They're like, all right, we just didn't play our best today. You know, that's what you're thinking. We just didn't play our best yeah. today. They got us. Okay, caught us slipping. You get us once, you're not going to get us again. And they're going to go to the next tournament. You know, you need a couple of those or a downward trajectory to really get in there and start, you know, grinding those drama gears nobody sees. And those, that's a long process. People think teams kick people overnight. No, man. No, no. That's months of prep. Months of prep to kick that dude. Mm, it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. And uh, I've been there. I've been kicked. I've kicked people. It ain't fun for anybody. Well, okay, Nobody wants what, to do what's it. What's the timeline there on, on like a kick? We talking like three months? The doubt starts setting in until you finally kick that person? That's. I feel like that's a little short, honestly. I'd say like six months. <laughs> okay, so six yeah. months. Six months. So the, the doubts have to be, they had to have started already if people are going to start kicking people soon. Is that's that what, that's what I'm saying, man. I, I, I can't believe no one's talking about this, but like the biggest change was you got rid of all this DPC regulation. Mm-hmm. It's a free for, we're back to the wild west. It's a free for all. And we're just all sitting here like, oh, no one's going to do anything. Like, what are you, what are you talking? Someone is going to do something. I'm telling you, somebody on these big teams is going to do something because they're going to feel the pressure and they didn't have that option before before you had to stick it out you had no choice mm-hmm. now you're you're gonna start thinking differently again and back in those days people kick people left right and center if you weren't winning tournaments so i'd expect something to happen and i mean part of that system i now. feel like it built up because you had to be with your team it was more important to have trust in your teammates you had to have trust in your teammates so do you think we're going to go back to we're breaking down some of that team focused foundation and, and a little bit more firing off the hip and picking the, up whoever you think is best for those middle tier teams. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you already saw like Aurora, they just put this Lauren off guy in. Like, I don't know what the, necessarily the logistic deal with sure. Armel was, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't have been able to do that in the old system is my point. And that happened yeah. pretty fast. Like, Oh, stand in bro. And then like, okay, thank you. Armel. Welcome. <laughs> you know, it's literally that meme. I think Armel probably had some actual logistics stuff going on, so I don't know yeah, if they would have made that choice. That. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, whatever. But I'm saying that type of thing can happen fast because there's nothing preventing it now. You know, what okay. stops a team that is dissatisfied with their mid after two or three tournaments being like, well, I don't know, that guy looks pretty good. You know, why don't we get that guy? Yeah, Satanic's What's... out there. Exactly. He, he already had his showing for uh, Blacklist earlier. All well, right, apparently... so... That guy has a million dollar buyout or some shit. So, you're not <laughs> oh, that's right. I heard. <laughs> I heard something like that. Yeah, he's in contract jail. He's not <laughs> who, who is he contracted to right now? I think he's under Spirit, right? Y- yeah, it was one of the junior teams or whatever. For I mean, one he's of the... playing for. He played for Navi Junior a bit, but I think his contract is under Team Spirit technically. I think technically they own. I don't fucking know. That shit. Mm. So that, yeah, that's so... bizarre. Somebody's locked down that guy, and uh, they they seem to be asking for a lot of money. So we'll see if he ever gets out of that one. The, uh, the boogie forward, though, drama wise, we had our finals, and it was it was a great finals because of the drama, sure. right? It was. Sure. Uh, I mean, there were some fun games. We got to cast it, uh, but it has been a while since I was as invested, I think, in an online cast. As I was in this one. This one was fun to cast because of the implications of everything that was going on, you know? I agree. It, it made it a lot more interesting. I think, I don't know why people get so upset about it, though. There's definitely a group of people who get upset by players trash talking each other. Like, they're all supposed to be some messiah, next, the next coming of like a saint that can do no bad which I think uh-huh. is probably the opposite of how most people in humanity's race are, you know, like <laughs> most people have immense flaws and aren't saints nearly. And I also think people just like, I, I, none of these guys care. None of them give a single blind fuck what some other dude is typing to them. I don't believe that. If they do, they that. mute them. If the guys who care just mute everybody. Yeah. Cause they know it affects them. So they mute them. No one is sitting there like dumb enough to have this affecting them and tilting them and not mute the other team. Like, I mean, well, maybe it affects them in a good doing? way. I'm just saying like, maybe it affects them in a good way. Maybe yeah, it motivates them. Dudes. Right. There are some of those dudes. Yeah. yeah. That's possible. It, it, there's definitely players. You tip them and like, they just go off like ATF. That guy's been tipped before. And then it, he just goes off. 
Mm-hmm. And like they tipped them and XG went off today. But I'm saying there's nobody there just getting typed at for a, five games in a row and just progressively getting tilted and more tilted. Just like, I hate this guy. He's such a piece of shit. I want to murder him. And just doesn't just mute them and then play a normal game. I've Doesn't that live use... in the back of your head, though? Even if you mute them, no, you still care. had the initial interaction. You still had this guy, you know, is talking some shit about me. He's clowning on me. Like, and he does it enough that you're I mean, like, I need to mute this guy. Like, that has to stay in your head and be I mean, like. You're, get, you're just in your own head no matter what, dude. Like, if you mm-hmm. want to get in your own head, you can get in your own head about anything. You know, you can wake up in the morning and be like, oh, it's raining. I never win when it <laughs> rains. Oh, shit. And then you're going to play anxious the whole day. I'm serious. Uh-huh. Like, that. if you're going to the competition, you have to be able to control your own emotions and your headspace. And it's just a, this is just another factor outside of your control. Someone can trash talk you. Someone cannot. You you have the act you have the control to ignore it or mute it or whatever, and I did that to people. I muted. So you all think of the OG what I'm getting players. out of this is champions <laughs> don't don't get affected by it negatively. Yeah, the people in yes. finals don't get affected by it negatively. The people on maybe tier one teams, most of them anyway, don't get affected by it negatively. Yeah, because they have the otherwise confidence. they wouldn't be competitors in the first place exactly. or be they, successful competitors. They have a good enough mindset and confidence that it doesn't matter, right? It's mm-hmm. like the old argument of I'm going to do things to dissuade you, but if you're a real champion, then nothing will dissuade you. You'll reach your goal no matter what. That's what I'm saying. Like to imagine that someone in this game, like Ame, who's played in like eight TIs and been to three TI Grand Finals or something, because like this guy puts a smiley face in chat that suddenly Ame is just like losing his mind and it feels disrespect and all like you know and these guys are all i don't even think they have bad blood with each other they were pretty friendly at the end anyway i think they were all just kind of laughing about it more than anything but i just don't believe if you are that easily tilted then you're not gonna win a land anyway like you got bigger problems i'm telling you you know because you got all this other voodoo shit in your head you know it just i i just don't i don't see it i think the guys who get affected by that shit there's already some weak part of the mentality that's going to get affected by other stuff regardless and then, yeah, you may as well trash talk him because it's like you're taking advantage of that. I'm going to use an advantage to win a game. Like MJ t- trash talk people all the time. Okay. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, athletes always uh, uh, trash, you know, talk trash. It worked, though. It worked for Michael Jordan yeah. and it worked for OG. So yeah. the people that they were playing up against were tier one pros and they all hated OG for the, the shit that they were doing. It did affect them. Maybe it didn't affect you, but you're telling me it didn't affect anybody on your team. When you guys were matched up against OG in lower bracket, well, yeah, that's why we lost. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Like, we sh- people should have been better at just ignoring it, but people's mentalities mm. were weak. I think OG won those TIs because they had they had better mentality and better setup for their overall team ethos and stuff than a lot of other teams. Teams back then weren't thinking about any of this shit. People would go in games and get tilted. I think nowadays it's, it's changed a lot. I guess I mean also more just negatively, like someone's actually getting mad that someone's trash talking, you know? Mm-hmm. Like maybe it tilts them a little, but they're not like, they don't suddenly hate this guy because he trash talks. Sure. It's like part of the game they, and they know that. Like you're a Dota player. Every single Dota player has been trash talked. Now, the one thing I'll say is there are a lot, some people who take it too far. There are people who take it too far. We know who they okay. are. And it's too personal or <laughs> too deep or dark. Or... Wait, who are they? Well, they're, I don't know. We all see them all the time. It's like, the <laughs> do we? I don't know who you're talking about right now. <laughs> it's like the, most of the NA server. You know, you go out there on okay. any given night, you're going to encounter some people that say some some crazy shit. Okay. I'm not condoning that. Okay. So you think, uh, so you Friendly think Amar calling, acceptable. Amar calling the enemy team clowns. That's not, that's not yeah, taking that's, it too far. That's, that's fine. Okay. There's literally a voice line that calls people clowns. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how Valve let let that one through personally, but the, uh, okay. I I will just say something. Avery, you're a very logical and mature person. Most Dota players I've met are not that mature, nor are they that logical. Yeah. So, so I think you are racing the bar far higher for the, the average pro Dota player that I've met. (laughs) I, I agree with you on most of this. I just think it's not as ironclad as you're putting forward. That's all. I think I think champions who win have a championship mindset are able to overcome these things. Now, 
Okay. I will concede that it, it there probably are some players out there that it affects negatively. They're like, why is this guy tipping me? Whatever. I'll, I'll concede that that probably happens. And then maybe they make up for that with other championship qualities, right? Mm-hmm. They're just able to overcome it. You know, there's probably some guys. I've heard guys like win TI and just be like, yeah, this guy was all chatting in this tournament. Fucking dumbass. Like I won, you know, but it still Dang. affected them, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it affected them. The, the spite drove them to be better and to win so they could rub it in somebody else's face, you know? But I guess that's just part of the game. Yeah. Like, Valve has said you're supposed to do this. So <laughs> Wait, wait, Valve has said you're supposed to all chat? Well, yeah, because it goes back to, like, TI 7 or 8 or something, and there were all these player meetings, and people were like, are we allowed to all chat at TI? Are we allowed to write yeah. stuff in all chat? Valve were like, yeah. And they encouraged, they've encouraged it. Yeah. By not banning it. Like, if they didn't want all chat, they just would not allow all chat. But they love that mm-hmm. shit. They think it's awesome. They create storylines. It's drama, you know? I, yeah, and I will, that I will fully agree with. And it created a lot of drama for this grand finals. Uh, just to back it up real quick to give a, a recap for people. Uh, Falcons went through and dumpstered extreme gaming in the upper bracket uh quarterfinal semifinal rather the 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 first one of the first matches of the playoffs in the first place and they dumpstered them and they were tipping the i don't know what they've got against xm i feel like it's probably just malreen just targeting the the opposing mid laner uh but they they absolutely they were just piling tips and smiley faces every single time xm screwed up or died or something and they just made him their mark and uh, not not a real response from Extreme because they couldn't make one. They had zero hold uh, in that first game. Uh, game two was was closer, but ultimately Falcons won that one too. Uh, and then the, the game one of the grand finals comes in. Extreme makes the lower bracket run. They're here in the grand finals. They get dumpstered again in game one. And there's tips flying at XM and smileys. This time around, XM is punching back a little bit or, you know, trying to where he's He's getting tipped and he tips right back and he gets smiled at and he smiles right back. Uh, and uh, that that kind of set the tone for the match. And I will say that I, I love I love Trash Talk. I love it in this instance as well. But I, I will say that this is one of the rare times where I've ever seen Trash Talk. And I, I did kind of, like most of the time I don't really care who wins. It's just fun for the drama. But I personally had a little bit of like stake of like, I kind of want to see them get their comeuppance. Mostly because they were trashing the hell out of these guys and tipping them. You know, I, I, the, the, you know, the emo mid game question mark, fucking godly, right? They're getting their ass beat. And he does that. That's great. Yeah, sure. These guys were trashing the shit <laughs> out of extreme <laughs> and, t- and tipping them and trash talking them basically with these smileys and stuff like that, you know? And like, that I felt like I was like, God damn, like you're already you're already stomping the hell out of you don't need to taunt them while oh, you're yeah. doing it, too. Uh, but I mean, like if that's part of their game plan, you know, that's part of their strategy, tilting their opponents. They want to get in their heads like uh, I'm totally fine with it. And I think it should be allowed. But this is one of the few times as a, a pretty neutral observer to all of these games. People think casters have biases. I don't give a fuck. These guys are all millionaires. You think I give a fuck if somebody wins an extra two hundred fifty thousand compared to one hundred fifty thousand of second place it doesn't matter to me all right so like you're saying I you're just... a shopify rebellion fan that's what you're telling <laughs> yeah we exactly the that. guys who haven't won for shit <laughs> <laughs> when they haven't won anything in a while that's when i'll kind of back you but I mean, like this does... is one of the rare times that i had a personal bias it does uh, create a different story yes like emo tipping when he's behind and making a comeback is like something that a lot of people can get behind you know that's a mm-hmm. rallying story these guys tipping when they're trashing somebody that obviously has players that are like big favorites in Dota history. Like Jin mm-hmm. Q and Ame, even XXS, and then these like DY and XM, I think, are more of the up and coming brands. But those three guys have really historic brands in China and in general. Like to call them clowns is different than calling some new team clowns, right? And that mm-hmm. creates a storyline that is definitely not favorable for you in the public perception. Like you're not going to get a lot of extra support from people like, yeah (laughs) finally somebody put ame in his place you know there's nobody out there thinking that they're just like what the hell is wrong with you so maybe you can say that that type of storyline is unfavorable for you but maybe you're a team that thrives off kind of being that heel there are some Mm -hmm. players who do that they kind of want to play that heel role and like 
yeah, I want people to to hate me and I'm going to thrive off that. And maybe that's part of that team and they're, they're doing that knowing that. But you are right. It does create a different dynamic and you have to be aware of that as a team and there's upsides and downsides to it. And obviously when you lose, it looks real bad. You know, if they yep. win, it looks okay. But if you lose, it looks real bad because, yeah, you're you're kicking someone who's already down kind of and people don't like that shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you you're you're seven and zero over a team, uh, and and you're tipping them, like there is very few people I think watching that game two and weren't cheering for, yeah, for uh, sure. like even if you were winning, cheering for Falcons to win the series and you back Falcons, like you wanted to see Extreme punch back. Exactly. And they did. And then, then they actually got up and <laughs> started pummeling Falcons. And that like maybe that found that one those those Falcons guys who were like, Yeah, I hope somebody does maybe they're like, wait, stop, stop the match, you know. But uh I, I think there are very few people who, who were not cheering for extreme in that game too. Uh and and I will fully admit that myself included. Now, once they got their punch back, then it was like, okay, now we're back on evens ground. They, you know, they they got their tip back. They felt, you know, redeemed and stuff. Whatever happens from there is like, you know, but like I I have almost never experienced that amount of like bias in a cast. And if I'm feeling it when I don't really give a fuck about these guys, you know, uh and like their success uh at, at, at tier 1 level, then like I know the community is feeling it. And oh, yeah, that's what sure. that's and that's what I saw from from the community. It was just like people got so much th there was a, a feeling of like vitriol <laughs> of how the amount of times that I saw the word foul clowns <laughs> in the chat rewatching the last like five okay. minutes of okay, that, that game game. I have four. a question. I have a question mm -hmm. to post. Is the amount of people praying for Falcons downfall after winning three tournaments in a row mm -hmm. that much different than the amount of people who were praying for game and gladiators downfall last year. I think so. You think it was more? I, I think it's more. I think you're, I think you're forgetting how many people <laughs> hated game and gladiators <laughs> at the, the tail end of that year. Like hated them. Oh, just okay. Let's put it this way. <laughs> every tournament. Like I hope this team loses. I remember the Reds were just endless comments about like, why won't this team just goddamn lose? I hate watching them win another <laughs> land. Like somebody beat them. It was literally pages of people praying to their heathen gods <laughs> for some team to be less dog shit and beat this team. So they don't have to watch them in another grand final. I mean, a lot more of that opponent. was directed at liquid. I felt like, because they're well, like, God damn it. Too, why are you gatekeeping my point other teams this, at a chance? My point is this is game and never trash talked anybody. Yeah. No, outside of Reddit, Game uh -huh. never trash talk. <laughs> these other teams are all chat, and they generated a similar amount of hate. I think that's just winning teams. Like if you're a winning team in Dota, you're automatically mm -hmm. going to get a bunch of people that root against you. And if you're a winning team in Dota that has a heal element, you're really going to generate a lot of animosity towards you. Okay, I so will they say, have that on top. I will of say the, the hate levels were comparable. Uh, at the amount of people who were cheering against Falcons was comparable. Yeah. And Falcons did it in a much shorter time, where it felt oh, like yeah, game I mean, the Gladiators. They were winning the entire year yeah, they, until they, it came to Ti they and speed ran that shit for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they for, <laughs> so and that and that was part of that was the fact that they would do these all chatting. And I and I personally think that the passion levels. Again, I'm going to point to my own feelings on that game too. It was just like if I'm feeling that, I know the the audience is feeling that as yeah, well. Yeah. Right. And, and and I think the passion with which people wanted to see Falcons lose was much higher than Game and Gladiators, where people were just kind of fed up with them. I'm like, guys, come on. Just stop fucking, I, just fucking lose already. I don't know, man. Quinn was a pretty big heel that year. <laughs> well, like, there okay. were, I'm telling you, you're underestimating. I don't think I've ever seen a team generate as much hate as that squad did, simply well. for winning. And the other shit Quinn did, yeah. But, like, it was a lot. I remember Riyadh. When we were at that yeah. event and they were like making that, they were trying to win lower bracket. Mm -hmm. I think when they got eliminated, it was like <laughs> the greatest sigh of relief in the Dota community of all time. Yeah. I'm just like, finally. Yeah. You know, I think, the, okay, I think but, there okay, were like, but other dominant teams like Team Secret, there was like, I'm COVID telling you, there, years. Were, no. there were two dudes on life support that watched that series and like after they saw Gaming lose, they were like, I can, I can finally go. And they just went, they went to heaven <laughs> in that moment. 
content that they were not going to win every event that year. Like that's how severe it was. I thought you were going to say the opposite, where they, where they were like Grandpa Joe, bedridden in Willy Wonka. I'm sure there were some they, of those too. Then they see it and they they hop out of bed. Yeah, yeah I can walk some again. Of those too. <laughs> you know, man sprouted his legs back. Like it, that was a lot. So yeah. I will agree that Falcons are speed running a bit. They're they're putting their hat, you know, their name in the hat here, doing a pretty decent job. I think Quinn also was a big part of the reason for the gaming gladiators hate. Yeah. Which but which is Amar. his own basically Amar, right? Yeah. Amar I don't think other Amar, dominant yeah. teams, like OG, very dominant team when it comes to TIs and stuff like that, right? They got all a hit, lot of hate, but there are also a lot of tipping, right? I don't remember the same amount of hate for Secret, let's put it that way. Back when the, the dominant uh 2020 no, secret of COVID or the old like, you know, uh ESL winning, you know, then they bomb out of TI, what was that? TI 2016 or something like that uh it's the all-star secret that won every oh, event leading sure. up into ti and then they bombed yeah, people out. love that team yeah they absolutely love that team that was like the fan favorite team of all time um yeah i'm just saying believe. it gives you give people a reason to hate you you know and they will run with it way too far but they'll run with it you know oh, yeah, whereas like i don't think it's necessarily just winners winning is that'll draw some hate but it won't it won't draw as much as i think Sure. Uh, I mean, the it's, it's a combination, you know. It's yeah. like you do like two or three of these factors together. <laughs> you really, you really ramp up that vitriol. Just people coming out of the woodwork, you know. Some guy hasn't watched a Dota land in like six years. <laughs> is here just to call them foul clowns. Like, <laughs> yeah, fuck these guys. I don't even know. I don't even know why I dislike it, but yeah. <laughs> the amount of times that I saw like first message, <laughs> the first time they've ever put it in the chat, and it's after Falcons have lost, have lost, and they've been Falcons. That's actually that's actually something I think about of like how many people. I think people underestimate how many people tune into single random tournaments. I think there's a general assumption in the Dota discourse, wherever it is, of like people watch everything because Dota players generally only play Dota. They're going to consume Dota, like. I, I almost have this assumption of like the average viewer has seen every tournament in the year or watched like they've watched the previous league or the qualifiers or even the rest of the bracket. There's a huge amount of viewers that come in just for grand finals. So I haven't even watched the rest of the games, which is like an interesting dynamic. But, you know, I wonder how many of those guys are just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what did I walk into? It's just I'm just here to watch a nice little Dota grand final, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just like a boxing match. So yeah, then that, that guy should happen in like push. a bigger land that had a broader uh pull, right. I would say. Because right. yeah, that, that. that's like a really different thing too. Because then you're just your first impression of these teams for a lot of people could be that. And then some guy's gonna be like, damn, you know, these these Falcons guys are just all fucking BM trash talkers. What the hell's wrong with them? You know, like that's the first time you've ever seen them play. That's what you're gonna get. So it is something to consider. No, uh I I, I think we both agree. Uh, that the all chat is just good for the game, right? People feel passionate about these sort of things. I think that it is mostly good for the game. It can go too far, 100%. Uh, I don't think necessarily it went too far. If you're willing to be the heel, you know, then, uh, and we do need heels, I think, in Dota. Uh, it gets people interested in the game. It helps. Uh, you know, the funny part was is that, <laughs> that Skeeter was trying, he said in one of those post-game interviews that he was trying to be, a little bit more all chatty because he he was watching Counter Strike, you know, and yeah. he was like, "We should do a bit more of that." And uh, he he tweeted, "Our playoff experience has been oddly similar to Bet Boom Dacha. Script writers need to put in more effort." And uh, as soon as they lost, Jabs, the uh, the other coach of uh, Team Liquid, who who was friends with Skeeter, to be clear, he retweeted he retweet quoted that and said, "Welcome back to Earth." <laughs> I mean, there you go, right? Like, you, know, yep. you know, kids gonna get cocky out here. You're gonna win a couple lands, mm -hmm. you're gonna get a little cocky, you're gonna have some fun with it. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, it is gonna motivate people. Like that is a factor. You you start winning these lands, people wanna beat your ass. Yeah. Like, and then if you trash talk them, they want to beat your ass even more. And then if you're trash talking them on Twitter too, it's like arc it's gone too far. Like somebody's gonna get motivated enough to actually try and stop being lazy and figure all the small stuff out and beat your ass. You're gonna get beat, but that's the that's the cycle of Dota. And then maybe they'll come back and be even stronger. And that's why all these teams progressively get stronger over the history of the game, because you have yep. to beat all the previous demons to get to where you are. That's like a cool factor of the game that just keeps going on and on. There's always yep. a bigger fish. 
I think uh, the biggest thing about this all chat is that it substitutes what's kind of missing in Dota, where I think uh, Dota, you know, people like to say you got to remain calm and dispassionate when it comes to playing the game, you know, don't overextend, throw your lead, all these sort of things, play like, play like machines in some ways, you know, uh, and you watch other esports, watch Counter-Strike, you watch almost any first person shooter, right? A lot more about momentum and feel of the game and and what they're doing they're amping each other up right they're like let's fucking go yelling yeah. at their teammates and they're yelling across the venue at their opponents as well oh, yeah. which makes for a great watching experience and you just won't really we have haven't seen that kind of of dota team in a while there was a time way back in the day where it was the chinese teams would be super loud right you could hear them across the venue all the time oh my gosh uh, and it was it was very taunting to their yeah. opponents uh, and so we got we had an element of that, but I feel like we we kind of got away from that at some point in time. It just was, I don't know, more important, I guess, not to engage in your emotions from the playing side. Would you agree with that? There is something about Dota that invites that. I was like, you know, I guess every competition has some sort of image of what an ideal player in that sport is. And people slowly gravitate towards that communal vision of what that is. Yeah, the so StarCraft is the piano player, you know, yeah. making his way across the keys, yeah, moving exactly. his, his screen super fast and, and is relatively like, you know, like focused on what he's doing. Right. It's like the highest APM. And, and maybe the CSGO guy is that ideal image is more of a vocal, like trash talker type bro dude. And yep. Dota, maybe it's more in this category of like, I almost think it's, and... it's like respectful. Like there's this element of you have to respect the game. Like respect the heritage and the the history and everything that came i'm serious and like everything that came before you know like don't disrespect mm. past ti winners and like these guys like want to ring like eight years ago there's still fans who will just like go to bat for them and maybe rightfully so i think it's a cool aspect of the game that is different than a lot of other esports but i think mm. that like builds into it so then when you have players that kind of feel disrespectful or like you know you call ame a clown it's like bringing that into it you remember when um uh, when uh Sammy boy called Jerax a clown. Oh yeah. Oh, it's the yeah, same yeah, yeah. thing, right? It's the same thing. Like that one got people incredibly upset because one Jerax mm -hmm. was, he was struggling. He was playing bad. The team wasn't doing well. They got beat. They get called a clown or whatever. But the idea is like, you're calling Jerax a clown. Like this guy's a two time TI champion. You're calling him a clown. And on principle, mm -hmm. I like agree with that. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like you're insane. <laughs> There's no way this guy's a clown. At the same time though, like if Sammy boy wants to do that to invigorate his team, and he doesn't want to think of Jerax as a super intimidating two-time TI winner. He just wants to think of him as another dude who's playing worse than he is right now. And he does that. Fair beats, you know, like mm. whatever. But that's part of this image. So I think when anybody kind of veers into that category as a Dota player, you're up against a like a wall of like, you're supposed to be the professional. You're supposed to be respected. You're supposed to be the most elite gamer at the most elite game in the world. And you're just bringing it down to a trash talk level. Like, how dare you, you know? How yeah. dare you go there? And it's kind of a, a weird dynamic. And uh, I don't know how many people actually think about it, I guess. I don't know where the actual perception is even. Like, maybe I'm off on it too, but it's got to be somewhere in there. I think it's definitely part of it. Yeah. Well, I guess that's an invitation for our audience to let us know how you guys feel uh, in the comments and stuff like that. We've already pushed this 40, <laughs> past 40 minutes. So we've already been, went past our a lot of time that we were supposed to keep this under like 30 minutes so uh, <laughs> what can we say we just like to talk <laughs> but uh we'll, we'll do another one of these uh soon but uh that kind of closes out elite league uh you got anything else you want to talk about before we go no looking forward to uh clown fall with all the other mm. clowns getting back into the clowny pubs calling people some clowns you want to do a, a, a do you want to do a patch notes one of these yeah maybe Maybe our own version of whatever that is. I'm not going to yeah. infringe on Purge's territory with his eight-hour special <laughs> extended edition discography, but, you know, whatever yeah. our version of that is, I'll trash talk the patch. I'll do it. I don't give a fuck. Dude, that isn't for me, man. The, <laughs> <laughs> the, funny, the patch comes out. I want to I want to read the patch. I want to get through the patch as quick as possible so I can play the patch. The idea of spending eight hours of breaking that down and not getting to play Dota can't do it. So we, we're, we're not doing that. We'll do our own thing. And we'll see you guys there, hopefully. But uh, that closes out uh, another episode of Not For Broadcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back uh, with the Crownfall update, I guess.